Hello, I'm Tim Rhodes, pastor of Bethel Baptist Church, and welcome to our morning worship service. Bethel Baptist Church is located on Kentucky Highway 36 in Frenchburg, Kentucky. You can find our website at www.bethelbaptistfrenchburg.com, and you can reach us at 606-768-3768 or 606-776-7360. If you'd like to write us, you'd like to know more about our church, you have questions, you'd even like to help and support, you can reach us at Post Office Box 141, Frenchburg, Kentucky, 40322. I trust you'll enjoy our service and perhaps be part of our ministry. But God bless you as we join our morning worship service. And uh, in the 40s, but uh, it's great here in Frenchburg, Kentucky at Bethel Baptist Church uh, preparing for our uh, morning worship service. Yeah, we got a new transmitter today. Uh, hopefully, it's a little stronger, powerful. I don't know if anybody uh, can they wave. Are, are you hearing us out there this morning? I don't, oh, yeah, yeah all right. Hey, there you go. That's a great way of communication, Tim, is yeah. the old horn blowing, right? That's right, absolutely. Instead of the raising their hands or amens or hallelujahs or blowing the horn, and uh, that works. Whatever it takes to show uh, people that uh, we agree with the Word and uh, we're uh, praising the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's a good way to do it. That's right. Many ways to praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, but, uh, so, uh, if you can see, I don't know if Mike showed. I think he's getting crazy. You see your guys, you know, they got your mask on. You know, the vehicles are keeping the distance, six foot distance. We're yeah. trying to, you know, still praise the Lord and Savior, worship the way uh, as we as Christians like to do, but also uh, respect the authority of our government leaders. Well, we have. We've been very meticulous. We're trying to be good uh, Christians, good citizens. And so we've been meticulous about spacing people and asking them to stay in their cars and listen to the ushers and do the things uh, they need to do. And as uh, folks will hear in the sermon today, uh, this is an opportunity to focus on interruptions or focus on opportunities. And so our lives have been interrupted and, uh, and sometimes we, we get kind of upset over inconveniences while there's people suffering through uh, diseases or, or loss of jobs and those kinds of things. And, and so these interruptions are providing opportunities uh, for us to minister in different ways. I mean, here we are out uh, outside in a drive-in service. Uh, we are doing more live streaming. We're doing more YouTube. And so here we are in uh, Frenchburg, Kentucky, doing some of the, finally being forced into doing some of the outreach that we should be doing. And our sound people and tech people have been so great about this. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we do have a lot of talented folks here in the church that they will do this, those, these kinds of things because there's no way uh, I'd be lost with all this technology and how to get all this stuff to work. But yeah, so thankful too. to have guys able to do that. Yeah. And, and females, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying everyone in the church, they just stepped up to make it work yeah hey here's rick just hey rick hey, judge here a moment. Here, we're here, just man. getting ready for service and we're uh we're just talking about the way the lord is enabling us to to uh, minister and to do some different things and so here in uh frenchburg at bethel baptist church it's good to worship in many ways whether it's here in the parking lot or uh uh, whether we're by uh, live streaming over Facebook, uh, on YouTube, uh, many ways to minister, and uh, the church has really responded. All of our uh, talent to do some some different things. That's correct, and you know we appreciate all the folks uh, that are involved in our church service. And there's and everybody's in this parking lot is involved in our Bethel Baptist Church. We appreciate uh, that. Yeah. I appreciate you coming out. Also, I appreciate all the churches in our community that were continuing to follow uh, the distancing and having drive-in services. I appreciate that. Uh, it's good for our community. It's good for our people. So I'm happy about that. It won't be long. We'll be back in the church and uh, having some back in the church house and having some uh, services and uh, worshiping and and uh, it'll be great. But. We've really had some good drive-in services, and even today on this kind of a day, several people coming in, and uh, it's, it's going to be another good day. 
yeah, as we uh, begin the service here in a few minutes, we invite you to come out anytime. Uh, these driving services, I don't know how long, but at 11 o'clock, come on out. We'll either be in a church house or out here in the parking lot. But uh, if you don't attend a church regularly, come on out at 11 o'clock here at the Bethel Baptist Church in Frenchburg, Kentucky, located at 926 on Highway 36. We'd love to have you come join us, whether it's uh, drive in or in the church. So, so God bless you as we begin our service. Amen. Amen. Sounds like you're ready to worship. Welcome. Welcome to Bethel Baptist Church in Frenchburg, Kentucky. Not only our church family who are here today, but those who are watching uh, being live streamed as well as those who will see the program later on YouTube. So glad you're here this morning as we worship the Lord Jesus Christ together. May God bless you as we worship. He didn't have to open the eyes of the blind to prove that he was the Lord. And he knew they'd still doubt him with he fed 5,000 with a lunch of one little boy. To cleanse every leper wouldn't settle forever the fact that God had come down. There'd be only one proof he wasn't telling the truth when his body was laid in the ground he had to rise to show he was holy and yes he had to rise to finish the story the part of the dignity. he had to die, but to bring me the victory, he had to rise. If he were not living. I'd be forever bound by the chains of my evil and my strife. And if he had not risen, there'd be no hope for heaven, no chance at eternal life. Oh, but since he has conquered destiny forever, I now have a reason I'm gonna shout Cause from the lonely to the brightest sunlight shone through When my Savior, he came walking out And he had to rise to show he was holy and to yes, he had to ride to finish the story to pardon me dignity. He had to die, but to bring him the victory he had to rise to pardon his iniquity he had to die but to bring me 
the big glory. Amen. We're so thankful for a risen, living, interceding, saving Savior. Amen. Amen. Father, Amen. we thank you so much for this day and this opportunity to worship together. We thank you for your love, your faithfulness, your goodness. We thank you most of all for the Lord Jesus Christ and our salvation through him. And Father, we pray that in his name you would bless and anoint this service. Please bless the singing the preaching, uh, our music, uh, our uh, outreach, our fellowship. Lord, let it all bring you glory and let it all lift up the name of Jesus. We pray you'd bless every person here, every person watching. We pray, Father, you'd meet the needs, whatever those needs are. If they're spiritual, emotional, physical, whatever the needs are, Father, we bring them to you. And Lord, we ask your special blessing upon our nation, uh, really upon the world that you would drive this virus away and that you would restore health and that, Father, we would turn everything to you and that we would pray and ask your blessings. We'd seek your will. We'd humble ourselves. And, Father, we just pray that we'd trust you knowing that you're in control. And so we're asking for healing. We're asking for help. And, Father, we're just praying that even in all of this as Christians, we would be the church, we would be the light, we'd be the salt, we would be Jesus in our communities. Now, Father, please bless us today. We thank you so much for this great opportunity to worship. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Everybody doing all right? All right. All right, let's sing showers of blessing. We got a little rain today. Let's pray for the Lord's blessing upon us. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of God. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round the heart falling. But for the showers we bleed, there shall be showers of blessing. Gracious revival, reviving us again. Over the hills, over the hills and the valleys. Sound of abundance of, of rain. Abundance of rain. Here we go. Showers, showers of blessing. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessings. Oh, that today they, oh, might, that fall. Today they, they might, might fall. Now is to God. Now is to God we confess. Now is on Jesus. Now is on Jesus we call. Showers, showers of blessing. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead, on the course again, on the course. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. All right, how about a little victory in Jesus? Have you got the victory today? Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story. Found a Savior came from glory. How we may be blind upon Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his roaming 
of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin, and I won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, and he bought me with his redeeming blood. I love the air, I knew him, and all my love is to him. He puts me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about a pension that he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He punched me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. In Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing blood. Pastor Tim. Amen. We have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, the life. The only way to heaven. And He will meet all of our needs. Uh, he will take us to heaven. You know, even during this time, while we're here waiting to go home, while He's preparing a place for us, He's providing everything we need, and He's praying for us. Isn't that great to know? The Bible says He is interceding for us. The Lord Jesus is praying for us. He knows what's going on in our lives, and He's praying for us. The church, I pray that you are uh, watching over each other while we're apart, and that you're calling, uh, you're texting, you're just checking on each other, making sure we're all okay. I know the Lord's going to take care of us, but it's good when the church family reaches out uh, to watch over one another. Hey, we have, uh, I know we have a lot of uh, uh, people graduating this time of year, and uh, there, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's a tough situation in the schools about celebrating these things, but we sure want to acknowledge them in our church family, and I've tried to uh, add some of those names, but if you have a graduate, eighth grade, high school, or college, please send that to me so I can get that in our bulletin and so we can at least in some way show uh, our uh, pride for what they've accomplished and our prayers for them for the next steps uh, in their journeys. So, well, God bless you. Keep praying for one another. Keep reaching out. And thank you, church, for what you're doing as far as getting our services set up, as far as continuing, those of you who are continuing our ministry to our Awana kids with food and Bible lessons. And for all that you're doing during this time, God has given us so many opportunities. Let's keep serving Him, keep reaching out to people, keep making a difference. God bless you. Yeah, and, and, and our deacons, remember... Uh, you coming out at 7 o'clock in church. I want you to know that we are meeting together, the leadership of your church. We're, le we're meeting together. We're praying over these names. We're praying for prayer requests. And if you have requests, send them in. 
and we'll have prayer for them on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. The deacons will be here to pray. God bless you. city called glory, so bright and so fair. When I entered the gates, I cried holy, the angels all met me there. to mention and oh the sights I saw but I said I want to see Jesus the one who died for all My knees and cried, Holy, Holy, Holy. I clapped my hands and sang, Glory, Glory to the Son. Of that city, all my loved ones they knew me well. They led me through the streets of heaven. Oh, the sights too many to tell. Jacob, I saw Mark, Luke, and Timothy, but I said, I want to see Jesus, cause he's the one who died for me. I bowed on my knees and cried, Holy, Holy, Holy. I clapped my hands and sang, Glory, Glory. The Son of God. Then I bowed on my knees and cried, Holy, 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 Holy. I clap my hands and say, Son of God, glory 
Amen. Thank you for those great songs, congregation and quartet. And uh, please turn with me in uh, God's Word to Colossians. One verse for a text, and then several verses we can look at. In Colossians 4, 5, I want you to listen carefully to this. It says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Father, we thank you for your word, for its power and truth. And I pray now as we study together that every word spoken is yours and not mine. And your will is done in each of our hearts and our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me read this one more time and listen carefully. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. And the word without means those that are not saved. So walk in wisdom, walk wisely, live wisely toward them, in front of them, who are unsaved, redeeming the time. Now this phrase, as you already know from Ephesians 5, 16, this phrase, redeeming the time, means to make the most of every opportunity. And so what God is telling us there in Colossians 4, 5, is to live wisely among the unsaved and take advantage of every opportunity that you have to live like a Christian, to present Christ to witness to them. Now that's God's Word. And that's to all of us who are believers that among the unsaved, we're to always be aware of our testimony, of our witness. We're to always be alert and live in such a way to represent Christ, to show them how Christians are supposed to live, and to take opportunities to witness to them. Now this is clearly in God's Word. Don't waste opportunities that we have when we're among the unsaved and don't blow your testimony when you're among the unsaved. Listen, we can work hard to maintain our Christian testimony and Christian reputation and then blow it in a moment of, of anger or, a, or, or bad behavior or do something, uh, maybe in our language or in some way, we can, we can destroy our testimony with the unsaved. And we must always be aware of our testimony. Now, that brings me to this. The title of the sermon is Interruption or Opportunity. Interruptions or Opportunities. Now, all of us, all of us are very busy. Everybody here would say, man, I am so busy. I've got this, I've got that. You know, even during this time uh, when so many people are working from home, we're still saying things like, I am so busy. Man, I'm busy. I've got so much to do. My schedule is full. I don't have time for any interruptions. And yet, here we are in the midst of a gigantic interruption. And what it has done is really provide opportunities for us. We had talked about it just before the service began. How that because of this interruption to our lives, we have found new ways to minister. And we have reached more people in these last uh, four or five weeks by having services online, streaming, or YouTube, or Facebook than we have in our regular worship services. As a matter of fact, we have people that stand in the apartments and the homes across the road, and they listen to our services. And so the interruption to our lives has provided instead opportunities to minister in different ways 
And when this is all said and done, the ministry of our church will be better than it was when this happened. Amen. Be Amen. Because we have had to take the interruptions and rather than just complain about them, we have turned them into opportunities. And I want us to look at those on an individual basis and I want you to think about this. We are busy. Our schedules are full. And we would say we have no time for interruptions and yet, I want you to look at these scriptures in Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10, the Lord Jesus is headed out of town. Now let me ask you if you think he was pretty busy. Yeah, the Lord Jesus was pretty busy. He had lots of things going on. And it says in Mark chapter 10 and verse 46, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, so Jesus was headed out of town. He had an appointment. He, he had things to do. He was busy. He was headed out of town for his next scheduled ministry item event. And this guy interrupts him. And a great number of people, blind uh, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many, tried, they tried to keep him quiet, told him to hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now listen, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And you know the story is he healed him. He said, what will you have me what what would you want me to do? Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus. Now listen. Jesus was busy. Jesus was headed out of town. And this guy interrupted him. But rather than ignore him, rather than to go on with his schedule, Jesus stood still. They brought him to Jesus. Jesus healed him because of his faith. He was not only received his sight, he was made whole and became a follower of Jesus. Because Jesus didn't see him as an interruption he saw him as an opportunity. In Acts chapter 3, the story of Peter and John in Acts chapter 3, in verse 1 it says, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the at the gate of the temple, which is called the beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. Now listen. Peter and John were busy. And they were headed into the temple. They were headed to do their ministry. They were busy. They had a schedule. They had important things to do. And this guy interrupted them. But they stopped. Before they went into the temple, they stopped on their own agenda and they saw an opportunity. This man was an opportunity. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew it was him. They knew it was this lame guy. And it says they were filled with wonder and amazement at what has happened. And so the Peter and John had a busy schedule. They had a busy life. 
They were headed to the temple. And this man interrupted them. But they stopped. And they ministered to him. And he was healed. And he praised God because they saw him not as an interruption, but as an opportunity. And they stopped and helped him and changed his life. Jesus was headed out of town. Peter and John were headed to the temple. And then in Acts 16, another story, and this is the one of Paul. Now Paul is a busy man. Would you say Paul was a busy man? Would you say uh, uh, he had a tough schedule? He had a lot of things going on. He was trying to preach the word as much as he could. He had an urgency to see people saved. He had an urgency to preach. And in this particular situation in Acts 16, he had wanted to go preach and the Holy Spirit had said, no, don't go there. And so he was obedient. And so then he waited on the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit ends up sending him to Macedonia to a place called Philippi. And so Peter, or or Paul, I'm sorry, Paul is headed to a prayer meeting. And you'll see in Acts 16, uh, verse uh, 13, and on the Sabbath we, Paul, uh, uh, Luke is writing here about him, Paul, we went out of the city by Riverside was prayer was supposed to be made. He was looking for a prayer meeting. But he said, we sat down and spake unto the women who met there. These ladies were there and they were meeting and Paul stopped. He was interrupted by these ladies as he was looking for this prayer meeting. So he was interrupted But he stopped as busy as Paul was and listened. And a certain woman named Lydia was there and Paul took time and talked to them and she was saved. And it says when she was, she she worshiped God, her heart, the Lord opened. And then in verse 15, and when she was baptized, she said, look, you can come into my home And you can meet there. And so Paul, as busy as he was, even though he had a schedule, he had an agenda, he was looking for something good, a prayer meeting. But this, these ladies were there who needed answers and he stopped and ministered to them and they were saved and baptized and had a place to worship. They were not an interruption They were an opportunity. Listen, we need to understand that God gives us opportunities and sometimes they're they're, uh, hidden, I guess you could say, as interruptions. We see them as interruptions. But God has them actually as opportunities for us. If we will stop if we will care, if we will minister. And I know throughout this whole virus thing, you have had special opportunities to minister to people in different ways, even with all the social distancing, even with all the things we need to do, you have had opportunities to minister. Now I want you to look at the, I want you to look at the opposite of what we've seen here in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Opportunities disguised as interruptions. Opportunities disguised as interruptions. In Luke chapter 10, you know the story, the very familiar story of the Good Samaritan. But let's deal with the other two guys in this story first of all. And it says that this... uh, lawyer had come up to Jesus and asked him about eternal life. And Jesus was going through the law with him and and he was discussing these things. And Jesus gave him an example. 
of how to find eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, you know that of loving Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbors yourself. Those are the, those have the whole law. If we'll come to the Lord Jesus Christ and then love others, that's the whole law. That's all the things. That's how we need to live our Christian lives. But anyway, Jesus was talking to him and He gave him this story, this parable of the Good Samaritan. And he talked about this certain man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down, a listen, a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. A priest. A religious person. There's somebody has been hurt. He's been beaten and robbed and he's left half dead. Here's an opportunity. But to the priest, it was an interruption. I don't know where he was headed. I don't know what he was doing. And maybe there was something very, very important. But there was an opportunity for this man on the side of the road. But he saw it as an interruption to his schedule. And then it says, likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and he passed by on the other side. Now, why didn't he want to be involved? Why didn't he stop? Why didn't he help? There are two. There are two. And they're the religious people. A priest and a Levite. They know the law. It wasn't that Jesus just now announced this. It was in the law that you love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbors yourself. And so there was their neighbor. There was someone who needed help. There was someone they could have helped. But they passed on by. Why? An interruption. I'm not saying that what they had to do was not important. I'm sure as a priest, as a Levite, I'm sure they had important things to do. But there are so many times that our important things to do, our busy schedule keeps us from doing things for other people that they desperately need our help with. Interruptions or opportunities. What do you see these as? Jesus was headed out of town, but He stopped and healed and saved. Peter and John were headed to the temple. They were busy. They had things going on. But they stopped and healed. And this guy was praising God. They introduced Jesus Christ to him. Paul was headed to a prayer meeting and took time to stop and talk to these ladies and led them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We have many opportunities around us disguised as interruptions. We get wrapped up in our own in a, in a, with our own agenda rather than yielding ourselves, submitting ourselves to God's agenda. He has an agenda for us. He puts people in our way as an opportunity to minister to them. So let me ask you today, are you too busy your lives are busy. Your schedules are full. You have no time for interruptions. Are you too busy to serve Christ? Are you too busy to serve Christ? Think about the time that you spend serving Him. Do you see His service as an opportunity to please Him? 
to bring Him glory? Or is He, is the Lord Jesus Christ Himself an interruption to you? Now you would never say that, would you? You would never say, well, Jesus, you're an interruption to me. And yet, do we do that sometimes? Think about your schedule. Now just wonder, do we take the time that we should for, for reading our Bible, for studying our Bible? What about for real, genuine prayer? What about for people? Now I'll tell you very honestly, I find myself sometimes busy with schedules. Busy with things. And I forget to check on people. I forget to follow up on things. Or I find myself at the end of the day and I haven't studied like I should have. Or I'm tired and I don't pray the way I ought to. Are we too busy to serve Christ? Are we too busy for people? Imagine yourself and imagine your own schedule. Are you like the priest and the Levite that passes by the needy person on the side of the road? Or are you like Jesus who is headed out of town but He stopped? You know, when we're on vacation, I'm telling you, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I would stop for you or not. When we throw things in the car and we're ready, that's wrong, isn't it? Would you stop if you were headed out of town and somebody needed you? If you were headed to church and somebody needed you, would you stop? What if you were headed to prayer meeting, as Paul was, and somebody needed your help? Would you just say something like, well, I'm in a hurry, I'll go pray for you while I'm there. They don't need prayer at that moment, they need help. Bartimaeus didn't need Jesus to pray for him. He needed him to heal him and save him. The guy at the beautiful gate, the gate called beautiful. He needed help. The ladies who had questions. What if Paul was too busy? And what they never heard the gospel. Are we too busy to serve God? Are we too busy for people? I hope this comes, I hope this is something that will really cause you to think how this virus situation has totally interrupted and disrupted our lives. And I hope we will examine your heart Examine your life and say, what this has done really is to provide opportunities. It's made me realize that God is in control. It's made me realize how much I need the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's made me realize how I must be involved in His ministry. If these are last days, then... What are we going to do? Just sit around and think about it? Are we just going to debate about it? Are we just going to study about it? Are we just going to sit there and wait for the Lord Jesus to snatch us away? Or are we going to see opportunities to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and to make a difference in the lives of people? I pray that we'll see not only... We, that we will see not... 
that the Lord has put in front of us to help someone, to share the gospel, to make a difference. And remember what it says in Colossians, that we must be careful among the unsaved to let them see us living our lives as Christians and that we're representing the Lord Jesus Christ and we're making the most of every opportunity that He gives us. If you're not saved, if you're not saved, please come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You could pray right there in your car. You could pray if you're, if, if you're listening by radio, if you're watching on TV or internet or however you're watching, you can be saved right there. Just repent of your sins. Believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved. Believe He died for you and rose again. Ask Him to come into your life, forgive you and save you and He will. And Christians there in your, in your cars or watching wherever you are, you can, you can dedicate your life to Christ. You can renew your commitment to Christ. You can say, I'm going to, make, I, I'm going to be used by the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to see these opportunities disguised as interruptions and make a difference Amen. for the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You, Father, for the opportunities You give us. And please help us as a church and as individual Christians. Help us especially to be aware of the unsaved and to live wisely in front of them, to represent Christ in front of them, to tell them about Jesus. Help us, Father, to have a real burden and compassion for the lost. And Lord, I pray that we'll see opportunities in the midst of interruptions and use them to help people and to serve Christ. And we pray in His name. Amen. There is not another sister, friend, or brother loves the way that Jesus cared. He proved his love for me when he died on Calvary. He gave his life for fallen man. His love, his love is a boundless love. And it reaches down and touches me. His love, His love is an endless love and will last through all eternity. Jesus wants to love you. There is none above you. You are precious in His sight. He will never fail you when the doubts assail you. He'll be with you day and night. His love, His love is a boundless love, and it reaches down and touches me. His love, His love is an endless love. That will last through all eternity. His love, His love is a boundless love, and it reaches down and touches me. His love, His love is an endless love that will last through all eternity. His love, 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 His love is a boundless love. God bless America. Above, from the mountain to the 
the prairie to the ocean white with hope god bless america my hope sweet hope god bless america my hope sweet hope god bless you safe travels God bless. Thanks for coming out today. Same time next Sunday. <laughs> bring a car with you next Sunday. Invite somebody out and bring a car with you, all right? <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed our program today, and I hope you were blessed by it. It is our uh, hope and our prayer that each week as you watch this program, you'll receive a blessing from God's Word. Our songs, our messages, they're about the Lord Jesus Christ. And perhaps someone accepted Christ today as Savior. If you did, we want to rejoice with you. And I just ask you, please drop a note in the mail to Bethel Baptist Church, Post Office Box 141, Frenchburg, Kentucky, and let us know. And we'll send you some material and we'll rejoice with you. Perhaps you're thinking about being saved. You never trusted Christ as Savior, and He is your greatest need. And today I just urge you uh, to admit that you're a sinner. You know, we all are. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But if you just acknowledge you're, you're a sinner and believe that Jesus Christ truly is the one and only Savior, the only way to heaven, if you'd ask Him to forgive you of your sins, to come into your life and save you, Jesus will forgive you. He will save you. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus is the Christ, that He died and rose again, He will save you. Our prayer is that you would know Christ as Savior. And if you are saved, it's our prayer that you would serve the Lord Jesus Christ faithfully. We're to accept Him as Savior but we're to serve Him as Lord, as you heard in the message. And so, thanks for watching the program. If you have questions, let us know. Uh, pray for us as we pray for you, and may God bless you.